Orlando's Rock Station, the Lynch and Taco Show. Time for Tech It Out. Some technology news to to share with you. It's brought to you by Rock the Bank. Our cash giveaways. 13 more chances for you to win $1,000 today. 9 o'clock is the first keyword. These keywords, we give them to you, and then you have the entire hour to enter them at our website. Just one per hour. Bookmark WJR.com in one of your browsers. Have the station on today while you work, and then just pay a little bit of attention at the start of each hour to get the keywords. We want you to have as many opportunities at these words as possible to get multiple entries. And if your phone rings the hour after you enter a keyword, answer it. All right. uh, Today is World Password Day. That's where we're supposed to update our passwords and make sure they're secure. Despite that, um, I remember that last year and I didn't do it. Still persists that here in the U.S., the most common used passwords are one, two, three, four, five, six. Password, admin, one, Mm -hmm. two, three, four, and unknown. Mm -hmm. None of those are considered secure passwords. Now, there's a company called Hive Systems that puts out a graphic each year that shows how long it would take hackers to crack your password, depending on how long and complex it is. No hackers are getting mine. Well, actually, they are, because last year on Reset Your Password Day, we said what it was. Basic passwords that are just numbers can be cracked instantly now. With AI, nothing surprises you just me. Just have numbers as your password. It, if someone wants to crack that the technology is there to do it almost instantly even a nine digit number would only take them about six minutes to crack but uh things get a little more secure as soon as you mix in some upper and lowercase letters and special symbols like exclamation points and such money signs Uh, if you add all those things in along with numbers a nine character password would take at least 479 years to crack Oh, really? And if you want to go uh, gonzo and go with an 18-character combination of the aforementioned, uh, it would take them about 19 quintillion years to crack it. Wow, this is making my head spin. D- don't use password as your password. That's your No, password. don't use 1234 either. Within five years, all new vehicles sold in the United States will be required to have an automatic emergency braking system. Earlier this week, a final draft of new regulation was unveiled by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, calling it the most significant safety rule in the past two decades. It's believed that the new regulation will help prevent many rear-end pede- rear end and pedestrian collisions and reduce the roughly 40,000 traffic deaths that happen each year. Hold on a sec. You're telling me that there's cars without an, without an e-brake? No. Automatic oh, emergency okay. braking. Okay. Not manual emergency brake. That's how. Without that emergency brake, I mean, I couldn't have taught my kids to drive. I held my hand on that thing the whole time. Ready. A controversial bill that would require all new cars to be fitted with AM radios looks to be set to become a law in the near future. Yesterday, uh, the AM Radio for Every Vehicle Act was rolled out that now has the support of 60 U.S. Senators, as well as 246 co-sponsors in the House of Representatives, making its passage almost a sure thing. Do you know who is not happy about this? Mm -mm. That would be the auto manufacturers. Oh, yeah. Who have gone away from, you know having actual radios, much less AM radios, in a lot of vehicles that are offered now. So this gets passed. Uh, Guess what? Not only will they be required to have an AM radio and all new cars manufactured, but they will have to be at no cost. Really? Yes. This because, uh, yeah, you know, you go, well, who who the hell uses AM radio? There's an awful lot of very rural areas in this country Mm -hmm. where AM radio is how people get distant signals and find emergency alerts and whatnot. So it makes total sense. It's just like when they were making it where you your home phone, even if you didn't pay your bill back in the day of home phones, that thing always worked for emergency reasons. Well, the same is true with uh, your your uh, wireless device. I bet Mike the Bull exactly. I bet Mike the Bulldog Bianchi sitting on that board going. Hell yeah, we need AM radio. Over here at AM 740, the game. Uh Uh, Google Phone starts rolling out audio emojis. Mm. 
Yeah, the uh, the app now rolling out audio emojis to some users. You're all going to get it if you use the Google Phone app. Uh, essentially, uh, six different uh, audio emojis. I've got the leaked audio of what they're going to sound like. <laughs> Isn't that compelling? That really just... Clapping, laughing, party sound effects, the sad trombone. Oh, and there's also uh, one for a fart. I am... Okay, now, now I might, f- might use one. I yeah. just was... The words, I caught them coming out of my mouth, Pat. I was going to say, I can promise you I'll never use it until you said fart. God, I'm such a child. Multiple newspaper outlets are suing Microsoft and OpenIA for copyright... In, for AI, I'm sorry. Multiple newspapers suing Microsoft and OpenAI for copyright infringement. Yesterday, eight newspapers owned by Alden Global Capital, including the Orlando Sentinel, filed a lawsuit claiming that Microsoft and OpenAI have used millions of their articles without permission to train their AI programs. The lawsuit also says these programs, like ChatGPT and Copilot, have incorrectly attributed false reports to the news rep- newspapers, which they say tarnishes their reputation and spreads information. What they're saying here is they're using these newspapers' uh, contents, which is copyright protected, yeah. and then you feed all of that information in just vast quantities into these AI programs. It's all ingested, and that goes to their knowledge bank to, you know, further their capabilities yeah. they're saying okay that's fine but you did it without our permission Better much pay less us. paying for yeah so uh, they may seriously have a big payday coming. man mike bianchi's thriving right now <laughs> yeah. am radio and the newspaper my it's br- coming back my breathe some breathe some new life into the newspapers there with some <laughs> court fees some or something income. i don't know uh, Apple phone users who have been having issues with your iPhone alarms not going off. Uh, Apple is aware of the issue, and they say that a fix is on the way. I don't have an iPhone, so I, I can't speak to this, Taco. Do you use your alarm feature a lot? I use my alarm uh, for a nap, and I use it to wake up in the morning as Par- well. Apparently, some of the users are saying they're setting their alarms. The alarms are going off, but you can't hear them. Oh, if I've had that where if if I'm... If my phone, if look, look, Pat, my alarm. Let's say it's set for seven fifty, and I'm looking at the phone. When it recognizes my face, it just goes uh, like a hum. Uh, That's the uh, attention uh, aware feature, uh-huh. which some users think might be uh, going haywire there. That's and, what it would be, and kicking into gear when it shouldn't be. So Apple knows they're working on it. Fix should be on the way. My alarm, you know, I rely on it whenever we're, you know our fishing admirals call and all the different things I have it set for. A Colorado lawyer has been suspended from the bar and fired from his law firm after admitting he used the AI chatbot, ChatGPT, to file a court case. Zachary Crable, who was hired to prepare a motion in a civil case, said he was, quote, stressed out and decided to use ChatGPT to generate the motion, including seemingly impeccable case, citing in seemingly impeccable, impeccable case law and citations. However... Crable never read the AI cases that were cited in the paperwork, and right before his hearing, discovered the cited cases were incorrect or totally made up. Oh, boy. Good job, buddy. Oh, boy. Yeah. And then uh, some streaming news for you here. Uh, Peacock has announced another price increase for the Peacock app. Just in time for the Olympics, anyone? What a load. It'll be going up by 2 bucks a month. A uh, new pricing structure will start on July 18th for new customers. Existing customers won't see the increase go into effect until after August 17th. Let's see. Oh, and uh, if you use YouTube TV, they are slowly rolling out uh, enhanced 1080i and, and uh, 720p. What does this mean? It means a higher bit rate for uh, HD channels um, if your internet connection is solid enough you'll be able better to take, picture be able to take advantage of that feature uh if you have your your settings on auto if you've got the adequate um bandwidth it should default to that if you've had the feature roll out to you yet it's a real slow roll on that one but you if you're a youtube streaming 
uh, customer, you may notice some improved picture quality. All right. There you go. That was a lot of stuff. I'm even more scared of AI. Lynch and Tacos, commercial-free, workday rock block, coming up at 8. Lynch and Taco on demand.